and welcome to another submarine chat. This one is about stealth submarines. You might have noticed that submarines are increasingly looking a bit like stealth aircraft. This is new and it's interesting. What I'm going to do is try to explain why. It's all about stealth. I should caveat that I am not a naval architect and I'm not an expert in sonar, so I'm going to give you the the defense analysis perspective on things. Like my other videos, this is not scripted, but I prepared some materials. So let's see how it goes. Firstly, the submarines um, are increasingly having sort of slab sides like a stealth aircraft. And there is still the cylindrical pressure hull on the inside of the submarine, but the outside is shaped uh, in an angular form. So it all goes back to sonar. And originally, sonar was developed in the First World War, just hydrophones. And in the Second World War, it became a major factor in the Battle of the Atlantic, at a time known as ASDIC or SODAR, later as sonar. There are two types of sonar. The first is active sonar. And this is where the hunter, in this case, the, the boat on the surface, transmits sound into the ocean and when that sound comes across an object such as submarine, it is bounced back and the echo from the submarine is heard again on the, on the ship. And hopefully they recognize it's a submarine and so on. So that is what was happening mostly during the Battle of the Atlantic. But the other type of sonar is simply to listen. And the submarine or whatever object emits some noise and the, the hunter is just listening. Both have their advantages. But during the Cold War, passive sonar, just listening, became king. The advantage passive sonar has is that you, you yourself, the, the, the listener, doesn't have to make any sound. So you can remain hidden. Whereas if you transmit on active sonar, other people will hear you before you hear them, typically twice the range. So submarines became all about stealth um, became about avoiding passive sonar. And to do this, they made the submarines quieter and quieter. And this has been the dominant factor for a long time. But stealth aircraft are very different. There, it's not about making them quieter. It's about deflecting radar waves because radar is the main way that people detect aircraft. And famously, Lockheed developed the stealth fighter, the F-117. This is the HAV Blue, which was a prototype or a development aircraft in the what became the F-170. It's a really interesting aircraft. And what you notice immediately is that it's very angular. What that's trying to do is deflect radar. With a normal fighter like this one, this is from, viewed from the front, as the radar comes in, there will always be somewhere that reflects the radar straight back um, the incoming wave straight back to the sender. So basically you get seen. With the stealth aircraft, the angular form of it is designed to deflect them elsewhere into other directions and nothing goes back to the, the sender. And that makes it invisible on radar or essentially invisible. While they were developing the, the Have Blue and the F-117, Lockheed realized that this didn't just apply to, to radar, it also applied to active sonar. Sonar and radar are a lot, lot the same. So they actually developed a sonar invisible or, or a, um, a stealthy submarine, which use similar principles, similar shapes to deflect the sonar away from the sender. So this submarine uh, proposal, about 1980, this is a, an illustration from my website. I'm not aware of any official or, or particularly reliable illustrations of this design, but it was definitely a real thing. Um, this uh, drawing is made from the memories of someone else. However, it gives you a fair idea. Basically, you're talking about the same principles as stealth aircraft applied submarines. Now, the US Navy, as it turned out, weren't really looking for this and weren't particularly interested. So it never took off. 
coincidentally, at the same time that in America they were developing the stealth fighter, in Germany, scientists were experimenting with stealth aircraft as well, and they actually were developing one. Um, ultimately, this project was stopped when the Americans found out about it, but it is a really interesting and little known aircraft as definitely a stealth aircraft. That'll be interesting because it's going to be the Germans that apply similar stealth to submarines, at least most visibly um, right now. However, like I say, it didn't catch on and uh, the next generation of submarines following um, the stealth submarine idea still focused on passive uh, sonar and being quieter. And that's still relevant, of course. However, if all the submarines become quieter, then passive sonar becomes less useful and active sonar once again is becoming more and more uh, relevant to naval warfare. The design submarines did make one concession though, as another way of um, avoiding active sonar is to absorb the sonar so that less of it is reflected back at the target. And they do this by sticking essentially rubber tiles on the outside of the submarines or coatings. Um, this is a Russian example. Um, if you look at the hull, it's a killer class submarine. Essentially there's like a patchwork just visible. It's pretty hard to see, but I've highlighted it here. Um, and Russian, American, British, Chinese, Japanese, so on. Many countries use this type of technology. But it's only now that we're starting to see submarines that are shaped to deflect incoming active sonar in a similar way that, a, that an aircraft deflects radar. And the leaders, at least most um, visibly, are going to be the Germans um, and the Type 212 CD, which is what this image is. How it works is essentially the same as aircraft. This is not the 212 CD, this is the regular type 212. It's got a cylindrical pressure hull, that's the circle in the middle. And whichever angle the sonar comes in, some of it will be deflected back to the sender in most cases, just like the aircraft. However, if you put an exterior hull around that cylindrical pressure hull, which has angles, then instead of bouncing it back, you deflect it in other directions. So this is just like stealth aircraft. However, it's more complicated than that. So because the surface of the water also reflects and because the, the seabed, depending on its depth, will also reflect some, even if you deflect it away in the first instance, some of it might still bounce um, back to the sender via one or more bounces off the surface and the seabed. So it is quite complex, and it's all about reducing the target echo strength. Each of those bounces reduces the noise and obscures the, the original source. And there's many more complications. The, the salinity of the water, layers uh, of different temperature water, um, different density water, salt water, fresh water, and so on. Um, there's a lot of variables at play. Um, both on sonar, the environment, and the submarine. Fortunately, what they have now that they didn't have in the 70s and 80s when they were developing stealth aircraft is modern artificial intelligence. They're able to run very complex and extensive algorithms that determine the optimum shape of the submarine, bearing in all factors, um, to reduce its target echo strength, to reduce how big it appears to a sonar, um, and it makes it as stealthy as it can be. So that's why we're starting to see submarines that are gonna be this more angular shape. I think you'll see more countries adopting similar principles, but it does come with a bit of a cost because all other things being equal, the submarines are gonna be larger because they need this angular shape on the outside of the cylindrical pressure hull. The pressure hull still has to be a cylinder because it needs to resist the water pressure, but the outer hull um, therefore has to be added to the outside. The Type 212 CD is the bottom submarine here. The original Type 212A is above it. A lot of the length difference is because of the enlarged interior hull, 
but a lot of it also has to do with the angular outer hull. It's taller and it's much wider. So it's going to have more water resistance and so on. It's, there's definitely trade-offs at play. But the Germans and also the Norwegians who are buying this clearly believe that it's worth it and that with active sonar playing an increasingly important role as submarines are essentially more and more silent, then I think more countries will adopt this. And there are definitely hints in some other submarine designs if you look carefully enough. Thank you for your time. Hopefully this was interesting. Let me know, give me a thumbs up. Say this was unscripted, so apologies if that showed in places. Um, I'm sure I'll do more videos. Take care.